Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the concept of financial leverage. Financial leverage refers to the use of borrowed money, basically debt, to finance a purchase of assets with the expectation of generating a higher return than the cost of the debt. Simply put, financial leverage is when you borrow money to do what? To either buy an asset or undertake a project. So what you are doing is you are using additional funding through debt to accomplish a goal. Let's look at the seesaw. Let's assume you want to lift this rock. And this is the objective or the goal. Let's call it the objective or the goal. Your objective could be a new product, a new division, whatever your objectives happens to be. Now, we're going to use money. This is the lever. This is the leverage. So to lift this rock, what do we need to do? We need money. So we're going to borrow money. So the money that we borrow, it's going to help us lift this rock. It's going to be used as a lever. And this is what we mean by financial leverage. Now, what is the problem with financial leverage? The problem is this. Let's, let's assume you borrowed. Let's assume this is a million. And with a million dollars, you will able to lift this rock and accomplish the goal. Let's assume million dollar was not enough. You needed to borrow two million dollars. To lift the rock now the two million dollar the cost of money is interest and this cost this cost becomes unbearable it means it does not make any sense to borrow two million for this project because you needed more lever why because the project did not achieve what it's supposed to achieve so at some point if you borrow too much debt one thing you may not be able to lift the rock because what's happening as you're borrowing debt you're adding more expenses in terms of the objective you're more adding more expenses in terms of interest to the rock so it's a very it's a very delicate balance of how much you will need to borrow in order to achieve your goal but this is what lever is using something else to achieve your goal and this is what we will discuss in this session let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So when the company issues that, it obligates itself to pay fixed interest costs on that debt, regardless of its financial performance. Once you undertake this project, once you start to work with this project, you're going to incur interest. If you use lever, you're going to have interest. And whether you were able to lift this rock or not, you have to pay the interest. This is in contrast to what? This is in contrast of equity financing. Equity financing is when you ask the shareholders to contribute money to finance your company. And by doing so, you are not required to pay them interest. You only pay them if the project was successful and the board of directors decide to pay dividend. However, under the debt under the leverage when you borrow you have to pay the interest so equity does not increase the company's fixed cost since dividends unlike unlike interest are not mandatory and can be adjusted based on the company's profitability now i'm going to show you the financial leverage while ignoring the tax impact of it so i'm going to show you how does it work let's assume we have a company and that company has a 1 million 1 billion in equity an annual net income of 100 million so if we want to imagine this balance sheet they have assets of a billion they have zero debt and they have equity of a billion that's what they have that's where they stand now and their annual income is 100 million and they have no interest expense since they have no liabilities so right now they have no plan to expand. If we compute return on equity, we'll take 100, which is net income divided by equity, and the shareholders are earning 10%. Let's assume the company wants to expand. And as a result, they need half a billion or 500 million. And they are going to raise this money through equity. In other words, they're gonna raise, they're gonna increase their asset, they're gonna increase their cash 
how much 500 million they're gonna raise equity and obviously their equity will increase by 500 billion now they have 1.5 billion in assets 1.5 billion in equity now the new equity is 1.5 billion net income expected to increase 125 million therefore the annual net income is to, the new annual net income is 225 225 million divided by 1.5 billion return on equity is 10 percent let's look at plan c in plan c we are going to finance this expansion using debt using leverage using when we say that this is when we're using the lever the leverage so we expect to raise 500 billion the new equity will be unchanged so basically what would the balance sheet look like from a balance sheet perspective so you understand what we are trying to do here so now we're gonna we're gonna I should I should I should I should not have deleted this 500 so this is 500 million will stay now we are getting the other 500 million from debt so this is the debt this is from liability and income is expected to increase 125 million now bear in mind we're going to have to pay 10 percent interest on the 500 million we have to pay 50 million now the income will increase by 125 therefore the original income plus 125 that's giving us 225 million then we're going to have to pay interest expense we're going to end up with 175 million well, if we take 175 million divided by the equity, the equity stayed at 1 billion, we have ROI, return on equity, of 17.5. What does that mean? It means we were able to improve return on equity. So shareholders are happier because we were able to improve the return on equity. As a shareholder, you're happier. You're earning more relative to what you invested. Net income is 17 uh, 175 million and you only invested 1 million now how is that possible this is the concept of what we know as using other people's money you used leverage and what did you do you paid 10 percent in interest cost okay this is your interest cost 10 percent however you raised 500 million and you earned 125 million so you earned 25% interest so you earned 25% and you only paid 10% so this is great the shareholders are happy because they were able to raise money satisfy the debt holders pay them 10% and the remaining is profit to the shareholders so notice the impact of leverage notice the impact of leverage return on equity is higher now this is the good news the good news is if you use leverage and you are able to pay off your interest, you are in great shape. Let's change the scenario a little bit and see what would happen under different circumstances. Same situation. Now we want to expand. Well, the only everything is the same except after we borrowed the 500 million through equity, what happened is this. The project failed and our net income went from 100 million to 75 million. Actually, the project failed and the economy went down south and we earned 75 million now return on equity is 75 million divided by 1.5 million remember we raised the additional 500 million in equity under this scenario plan b therefore return on equity is five percent that's not good right five percent let's take a look at plan c when we finance with debt now we're using leverage we borrowed the 500 million using debt the equity did not change now remember we have to pay 50 million in interest because we borrowed 500 million 500 million times 10 percent that's 50 million so our income went down to 50 million then to 75 million then we have to pay interest of 50 million in additional cost our net income is 25 million now we're going to take the 25 million divided by 1 million and our return on equity went down to 2.5 now why did that happen why did that happen well the reason it happened I mean let, let's take a look at the original uh, the original uh, scenario the original scenario uh, what we did is we were better off using that what happened now we're not better off using that why because when we paid 10% we had to pay 10% on the 500 million when we paid 10% and we borrowed this additional money we could not cover the 50 million so what happened is this that 50 million ate up 
our earnings, the 75 billion that we made in earnings before interest and taxes, 50 million of it, the interest ate up the earning and what's left for the shareholders is 25 million. And this is the riskiness of using leverage. When you cannot cover the 10%, the company is in trouble. And this is the degree of financial leverage that we have to be aware of. Because the higher leverage you are, the higher is the risk. So the degree of financial leverage plays a crucial role in determining the financial sensitivity of the company. Specifically, a company with a high financial leverage, it means more debt, will experience more pronounced fluctuation in its profit. As you saw, the profit will go down substantially. All will go up substantially. Remember when we did well, our return on equity was 17.5%. And when we didn't do well, return on equity went down to 2.5. Versus 10% and 5%. Okay, versus the equity scenario, I believe those are the numbers. 10 uh, actually 15% and 5%. So the fluctuation in the fluctuation using that is more because the debt it's going to eat up your earnings before interest and taxes. It's going to eat up this amount, which is going to change the bottom line to the shareholder. And this heightened sensitivity arises because with high leverage, a small increase in EBIT can lead to a substantial rise in net income after you cover your fixed cost, and the opposite is true. A minor decline in EBIT can disproportionately affect net income as the fixed interest cost consume a large proportion of the diminished return, of the diminished earning. So what we are saying is that is a double-edged sword. In good times, yes, we're going to earn 17.5. In bad time, we're going to earn 2.5. And sometimes we even go and have zero or below. Now, everything that we talked about up to this point, we did not factor the tax. And if you notice here, I specifically mentioned, but I should have pointed out, that I did not mention the tax effect. Now, we need to introduce the tax effect because oftentimes the tax effect to finance with debt plays a major role in selecting debt. Why? Because interest on the debt, when you pay interest, interest is tax deductible. Remember that 500 million that we borrowed and we paid 10%, we have to pay 50 million in interest. What's going to happen? This 50 million, depending on our interest rate, it's going to reduce our taxable income by 50 million. It's going to save us taxes. So an additional advantage of using debt over equity is the tax deductibility. Interest is tax deductible. This means that actual, the actual cost of debt is reduced by the tax saving generated from deducting the interest. What does that mean? It's making debt an attractive financing option from a tax perspective. So if you're looking at your tax options, you might say I'm better off financing with debt because I'm getting a tax deduction. Because unlike interest expense, dividend is not tax deductible. So if you use equity, Interest is not, not tax deductible. Don't worry, I'm going to show you some numbers how the tax savings occur. But the other thing you need to be aware of, the more financial leverage you have, yes, you're going to get a tax advantage, the riskier you are as a company. So companies with substantial debt obligation face the constant challenge of generating enough income to meet their interest expense. So they are under pressure. As a company, you are under pressure. Failure, failure. To do so, failure to meet your financial obligation lead to financial distress and in some situation, bankruptcy. This is how companies go out of business. The lenders force them out of business. They cannot pay off their debt. Also, a company's history of high leverage and struggle to meet debt obligation can tarnish its reputation with lenders. So if you have high debt and you fail to pay them or the risk of not paying, that's going to cut off the lenders. And lenders are your oxygen. You need money to operate. That's going to potentially limit the ability to secure financing in the future, which is going to limit your ability to grow. This situation can constrain a company's growth opportunity and ability to respond to competitive pressures. This is emphasizing the need of careful consideration and management of financial leverage. You have to understand financial leverage is risk. Yes, it comes with reward. And we saw the reward kind of reflected itself in the 17.5 when we did well. Now let's talk about how to value a firm that is levered firm, a levered firm. Now we're going to rely on a theory, a finance theory by two researchers 
Magnoli and Miller, they have a theory or proposition. And in this theory and pro or proposition, they value a levered firm. How do they value a levered firm? Levered means a firm with debt. How do we value a firm with debt? A firm with debt equal to the value of the firm without the debt, the unlevered firm, plus the present value of the interest savings, also known as the tax shield. Well, let's break down this formula to see the importance or the value of the leverage, the value of the debt. So first, we have unlevered firm value. So this is the value of a firm without any debt. This is the value of the firm without any debt financing. It's based solely on the firm operating asset and cash flow. Simply put, you have no debt, you have assets, and you are using those assets to generate return, and this is the value of the firm. Now let's talk about the tax shield. I told you I'm going to talk about the tax shield and figure out how to find your tax savings or the tax shield. When a firm uses that financing, the interest payment on that debt are tax deductible. And this creates, this tax deduction creates something called the tax shield. And this reduces the firm tax liability. So let's go back to that 50 million, 50 million that we, that we had to pay in interest. Is this really 50 million? Well, it's yes, we have to write a check for 50 million. However, this 50 million is a deduction and our tax rate is 40%. If our tax rate is 40%, this 50 million reduced our taxes by 20 million. How? So, because we, we, we reduced our taxable income, our taxable income by 50 million. Yes, we have to pay this. We saved on our taxes 20 million because reducing our taxable income means saving our taxes, you know, whatever we reduced by 40%. So simply put, the net interest cost, if you want to find net interest cost for this company, yes, we paid, we're going to start by the negative, negative 50 million plus 20 million in savings, the negative, the net cost is 30 million. Another way to find this 30 million, usually you will take 50 million times 1 minus 0.4, 1 minus the tax rate, 50 million times 0.6 equal to 30 million. Same thing. So notice the net cost is 30 million, but the tax savings or the tax shield, the tax shield is 20 million. So now we understand how does it work, the tax shield. So the, the, Levered firm value, so the, the value of a firm that's levered. So assuming we have two companies, company A and company one and company two. Uh, assuming company one has no debt, no leverage, and company two has debt, which is has some leverage. What we are saying, the levered firm, the value of a levered firm is the sum of the unlevered firm. So the one, one, so this is one and the present value of the tax shield. The tax shield is two, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna take two and discount two at some percentage. And we're gonna do so in perpetuity because we assume the tax savings are in perpetuity. Therefore, the formula, so VL, the total value of, the, of a levered firm equal one, the unlevered firm value plus two divided by a discount rate. Two means the tax shield discounted in perpetuity. Well, the best way to illustrate this is to do what? Is to work an example. Suppose a firm has an unlevered firm value of 1 million. So this is number one. one number one is a million. Suppose the tax rate is 40%. Suppose the interest payment on this for this company is $50,000. So this company has interest cost of $50,000. Now, the discount rate is 10%. Discount rate is 10%. Uh, what does that mean? It means when we when we when we discount the tax shield, remember it's going to be discounted. We're going to be used ten percent, and usually this is also the interest cost. So how do we compute first the tax shield amount? Again, we're going to assume the interest rate is ten percent on the on the debt. So if we have fifty fifty thousand in debt, the tax rate is forty percent. So the tax savings is twenty thousand. Twenty thousand are the tax savings. Now, what we're going to do, the tax savings, or this is the tax shield, this is number two, the tax shield, we're going to take the tax shield and discount it at 10%, which is the discount rate in perpetuity, and that's going to give us a value of 200000 Well, what does that mean? It means if we discount 
$20,000 forever in perpetuity at 10%, it's worth it's worth $200,000. And this is, I hope you know how to do this. Simply put, you take the amount in perpetuity divided by the discount rate. It's as simple as that. It means the, the tax savings, you remember we had two companies, company one and company two. The company with that, just with the tax savings alone, they have an additional $200 in value. Therefore, what we say is this, the value of a levered, levered firm, the value of a firm with that equal to the value of the firm without the debt plus the present value of the tax shield, which is equal 1.2 million. What we're trying to emphasize here is the value of the debt or the benefit of the of the debt, the benefit of the debt. So the levered firm is 1.2 million, which is $200,000 higher than the unlevered firm value due to the tax shield benefit of the debt financing. What does that mean? It means by using that, by using that, we can do what? We can increase the firm value. And this is a simplified version of things. Why? Because many things could affect other than the debt. Here we're only saying debt and no debt. And the company with that, what they're saying is because of the tax savings, simply put what they're saying, as long as you can pay your debt, in other words, if you can afford to pay your debt, and another firm similar to yours don't have the debt, you're going to have a tax savings. And the tax savings will give you a value. How much is that value? It's your tax shield discounted in perpetuity, whatever the discount rate happens to be. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. If a company with a high financial leverage, it means a lot of that, that's the first thing, experiences a decrease in sales, sales went down, which of the following outcome is most likely? Well, let's see. A, its net income will increase this proportionally. Well, sales is going down and we have that, not at all. <laughs> net income will decrease this proportionally. Well, net income will not increase. A is out. Its net income will decrease this proportionally. <laughs> yes. I just this is what I just said so it looks like B is the correct answer but you want to confirm C and D now why would that happen well if sales go down it's going to reduce your net income and if you have a lot of that your net income will decrease disproportionately so if your sales went down 10 percent your net income could go down by 15 or 20 percent disproportionately proportionally means the same amount why would that happen because of high leverage when we talked about high leverage we said the risk of high leverage is it's very sensitive to a reduction in sales. So if your sales go down, your earnings before interest and taxes get eaten up with interest, a large proportion of it. That's why your net income will decrease disproportionately. C, its ability to pay dividend increase. That's an easy elimination. You have less sales, you have less revenue. That's not true. D, interest coverage ratio will increase. No, because your earning before interest and taxes will go down because sales went down and your interest stays the same. So let's assume your earnings before interest and taxes was $5 and your interest is two. That's a five. After your sales goes down, maybe your, maybe your earnings before interest and taxes go down to eight and your interest stays the same, your interest coverage goes down. So as your sales goes down, your earnings before interest and taxes goes down from 10 to eight, your interest will stay the same your coverage will reduce. What should you do now? You want to really understand financial leverage because they could ask you many tricky questions. And to learn about this, you want to go to Farhat Lectures and work additional MCQs. Whether you are a CPA candidate, CMA candidate, accounting, finance students, Farhat here is always to help. Good luck, study hard, invest in yourself, and of course, stay safe.